Starting off this countdown, we have these space monkeys. If you're an animal lover, then this one is gonna break your heart. Before sending humans into space, animals were launched into space to see how space travel would affect them. They typically chose primates for their close relation to humans. Obviously, looking back at that, that is hella messed up. A number of monkeys sadly passed away from these tests. I mean, the first monkey sent into space died from suffocation. There's photos of him being prepped and getting ready for space, and now looking at those photos, it's just hella hella disturbing. So now NASA has removed all the photos they have of their test subjects. They don't want people finding out their controversial past. Of course, you can still find these photos online today, but NASA still has tried to cover it up. Number nine, Pluto. Remember when we just kicked out a planet? Yeah, just see ya. My entire life growing up, I had to remember this nine word jingle. And now Pluto's gone all of a sudden and the whole thing is screwed. My very evil mother just served us nasty pancakes. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. Now we have no idea what evil mother is dishing out. Pluto's gone. Now we have eight planets. Gone, but not forgotten, Pluto. We're still watching you from afar. Before 2015, every picture that we had of the dwarf planet was grainy. It was like a blackberry curve where you click it and it makes the sound like, you're like, oh, it didn't even sound good. But July 2015, thanks to the New Horizons spacecraft, Pluto got a glow up. We also got a close up image of Pluto's surface. It looks like a lovely time. It's nice and calming and relaxing. 12,000 foot tall ice mountains, just a good time. Compared to Australia, honestly, Pluto does seem a lot smaller. It looks like a planet to me still, but hey, what do I know? I'm just a little guy on a bigger planet. Number eight. 20 year time lapse. I'll time lapse something for absolutely no reason. I'll just set my phone up and watch icicles melt and I'm like, mm, this is gonna look good in seven hours. This next one, I had to triple check to make sure it was even real. This is mind blowing. Back in 2018, the European Southern Observatory released their own time lapse. This one has been running for about 20 years and it's images of M87. And they've been showing a slow change to the center of our galaxy around Sagittarius A. This gift shows the movement of stars around a black hole over 20 years. Yeah, seeing this makes me feel uneasy. This observation reinforces Einstein's theory of gravity. One of these stars is orbiting the black hole at 3% the speed of light. That's really fast. Ugh, it just looks like bloom, bloom. I don't like that. I feel like I can't read looking at that. Oh, it's called anxiety. It's a panic attack. Number seven, the evil eye galaxy. I'm pretty sure Thanos lives here, but all right, let's talk about it. The evil eye galaxy or the sleeping beauty galaxy, or if you're a nerd, M64, might be one of the coolest space photos of all time. This looks like something out of a Thor movie. Gas on the inner galaxy rotates in one direction. You can tell this thing is spinning just by looking at it. That's the beauty of it. But the outer layer, however, that's spinning in the opposite direction. That's why it's on our list here today. This is odd behavior for a galaxy. Scientists theorize that the evil eye galaxy is the result of two galaxies smashing into each other. The fascinating thing really here is that we're looking at something 17 million light years away. So this image of the galaxy, the evil eye galaxy, is actually from a very long time ago. From like when Neanderthals were still on Earth. You know what I mean? That's mind bending. That's why James Webb is such a big deal. We're gonna see very far into our past. It's gonna get pretty ugly. It's like, is that a dinosaur? What? Number six, another interstellar object. We've mentioned Amuamua on this channel before. Amuamua was the first ever interstellar object to be recorded into our solar system. Back in 2017, this cigar-shaped comet was the first ever interstellar asteroid detected by humans. But cut to November 2019, Hubble Space Telescope found another one. Traveling at over 100,000 miles per hour, again, pretty fast. This interstellar comet was born from another star, so it's only just passing by, just for a hot minute, just saying hello, just came by to say hi, peace and leave. Look at this photo, I feel like I'm underwater or aliens are just passing through this cosmic neighborhood. There's something eerie about this. It looks so empty. I love seeing stuff about space, but it also makes me feel like I can't breathe, so. How exciting is that? Number five, a new solar system. So when I say an interstellar comet from another star, you know, she goes to another school, <laughs> this is what I'm referring to. Back in 2014, the Radio Alma Observatory in Chile got a pretty remarkable image. This is a star roughly 450 light years away, and right off the bat, it looks different. It looks like a planet from Star Wars that just got obliterated by the empire in the dark side. But in fact, it's only just begun its space days. This is a brand new solar system, people. Look at this, it's a baby. Planets are literally forming as the dust literally settles. So many comets are now hurling through space because of events like this. That's why when we get the odd interstellar visitor, we're trying to study everything we can as fast as we can. Because this thing's like, like, ah, it was blue. I think it was blue. I don't know, did anyone get that? Number four, Neo wise. I looked in the sky everywhere for this thing, but I could not see it. I'm like a crazy person, climbing bridges, looking up, making wishes and shit. If you were able to see the comet Neo wise with your own 
Neo eyes. I don't know, I tried something. Consider yourself lucky. If you didn't get to see it, well, that's why I'm here. When the Hubble telescope took a glance at the passing comet in August 2020, even though it's 27 million miles away, NASA still learned a few things. The comet's coma, the cloud of dust and the gas that follows behind Neo eyes, had never been seen this close before. NASA was able to determine the nucleus of the comet was still being held together, which was pretty shocking considering how close it got to our own sun. Comets are already fragments from our past. These icy leftovers from when the solar system first formed, like what I just mentioned, and it's now on its way back to the outer solar system, but next time, next time we'll catch it. Next time I'll see you with my own eyes. Just kidding, it won't be back for another 6,800 years. If you missed it, zero chances ever again. You missed it. Number three, the sun. While it's not recommended that we stare at it, the sun is pretty beautiful. Haven't seen or felt it up here in Canada for a while, but when it's around, it's pretty lovely. I'm so pale, I feel so pale. Photographer Andrew McCarthy layered together 150,000 different photos of the sun to create this 300 megapixel image for us to now awe at. I tried to load it on my phone and I literally felt my phone get warmer. I was trying to load it. I'm like, man, this is a great photo. I can actually feel it. I can feel the sun on my face through the photo. How is this possible? iPhone 8 plus, I'm like, oh, that's why it's possible. It's not working anymore. I'm like, hello, Mr. Sun, hi. In order to not go blind or light any fires, Andrew required a special telescope with numerous filters. So if you're thinking of pointing your phone through a telescope and just pointing at the sun and looking through or whatever, just don't. That's why these guys do it. So we don't have to. Number two, the first black hole. Back in 2019, over 200 scientists from over 20 different countries all put their big scientist brains together in order to get the first photo of a black hole. We've seen them in movies. I mean, the movie Interstellar almost gave me a panic attack. A panic attack in IMAX. Lovely. But this is real life, so it's not as glorious, but it's definitely twice as impressive. The science involved here to even make this possible is mind-bending. Right at the center of M87, the galaxy just, you know, a mere 55 million light years away, this black hole has been ripping apart anything in sight in a galaxy in the Virgo cluster. It's far, far away, don't worry. We're not gonna, you know, turn into spaghetti anytime soon, we're good. But how in the world did scientists even get a photo of something that sucks in light? How does this make sense? The Event Horizon Telescope is how. The Event Horizon Telescope shows us the dark center, and it's this hole that swallows up matter, of course, and it looks like a ring that you can maybe look around almost. But the light that we see here in this photo, these radio waves that are represented, that's coming from all around the black hole, behind it, in front of it, the sides. It would actually be impossible to see with our naked eye, of course. But after a team made a virtual telescope the size of the Earth, a virtual telescope that's the size of the, yep, you got me, they were now able to see the radiation surrounding this black hole. This is something we barely understand in the science world, and the fact that we can see a blurry photo is more than we deserve. I think I see Matthew McConaughey in the bottom right there, that little, that little blur. I think that's him. I think he's yelling Murph as loud as he can into a spacesuit for some reason. And finally, coming in at number one, James Webb's first photo. Okay, are we ready? This is it. He took another photo. He took a selfie, and then he flipped it, reversed that camera, bam. What did we get? He may have left our world on Christmas Day 2021, but James Webb has finally sent us a Christmas gift. A little late, but we'll gladly accept it. After getting settled for 48 days, literally, just just unfolding himself in space like a cold, tired transformer, just winding up a camera slowly for 48 days, James Webb finally sent back a photo of a distant star. Upon first glance, it looks like a cluster of stars, you know, like you accidentally hit space mode on Google Earth and you're like, what, where am I? This is actually the same star 18 times. The 18 hexagonal segments haven't aligned yet, that's a process that'll take months, but during this daunting task, NASA will test out these blurry, ugly images. I don't think ugly, like they're calling it blurry or ugly, it's like pizza, good, bad, blurry, cold, it's all great, we love it all. Show us all the space photos. Come the end of April, however, that's when these pics will start changing the game. The James Webb Telescope is 100 times more powerful, it detects infrared, and we'll be able to see exoplanets. Also, if there's any oceans out there, we'll be able to search for atmospheres. This telescope is the universe's greatest spy, essentially. Kicking off the list at number 10, the Pluto Slug. Back in January 2016, the New Horizons probe was sending tons of new information back from our little ex-planet, Pluto. The icy plane shows a series of lines, almost like these giant space slugs, dare I say, are slowly moving across the surface of the planet. Check it out. It reminds me of the episode of SpongeBob, where the gang, you know, rides a rock across the ocean floor. Maybe Patrick and SpongeBob are delivering a pizza on Pluto, okay? They could be just in the weeds, they could be busy. This icy area of the dwarf planet is called the Sputnik Planum. Scientists believe so far the reason for all these lines is that the planet is breathing in a way. If that sounds creepy, it's because it kind of is. The planet's cooling and heating and it's kind of moving around, but we'll leave some room open for space slugs because you know what, at this day and age, you never know. I've seen enough Avenger movies, I'm like, hmm, could be space worms. In our night's 
spot, we have the aliens. It seems like NASA and Area 51 might be hiding aliens. What's new? The photo I'm about to share with you is a leaked photo of aliens hidden in Area 51. The photo was taken in the 1980s and years later someone leaked it online. I don't know about you, but that looks exactly like a space alien to me. And it looks like they're running some sort of tests on them or something. Now of course, people think that this photo is fake. Go ahead, believe whatever. Just know that there are tons of individuals that believe it to be real. Plus it's never been debunked. Take what you want for that. <laughs> Coming in at number eight, we have the second sun. According to astronomer Paul Cox, there is a second sun in our solar system and NASA is keeping it a secret. Why would they do that? I don't know, because they can. So Paul discovered this after using his telescope to stare at the planets. He actually live streamed him doing this, and while doing so, he pointed to a black dot, which was Mercury. He said that this was the location of the second sun. He said, and I quote, you may be asking yourself, what is that large round thing to the right of the sun? Well, that's our second sun. I don't know if you knew that we had a second sun, but there it is. It is normally hidden from view. NASA and other organizations usually hide that stuff away from us. Now, I don't know why NASA would hide this from us, but apparently they are, and there's a second sun out there. In our seventh spot, we have the SpaceX explosion. Back in 2020, a NASA worker leaked video and photographic evidence of a SpaceX explosion. NASA was furious when they found out and sent out a memo to all workers saying that they would be fired if they publicly shared photos and videos from the Space Center again. And then someone leaked that memo. Anyways, NASA was all like, nah, nothing happened, nothing exploded. Then the video surfaced and they're like, oh snap, we're caught. It started when people saw smoke coming over the space coast and were like, what's going on over there? And NASA failed to properly explain. But like I said, things got leaked and they were exposed. In our sixth spot, we have Planet X. So astronomer Paul Cox says that NASA has proof of Planet X. It's a broken planet that is behind the sun that he believes will eventually crash into Earth and wipe out all of humanity. But obviously, NASA doesn't want anyone to know this, which is why they're hiding it from all of us. And I genuinely hope that this isn't true, and that Paul's lying, and that he knows nothing, because that's terrifying. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the trees on Mars. A weird shot taken of Mars revealed what looked like dark trees rising from the surface. Like it straight up looks like trees and shrubs are growing there, which, we know isn't possible. So then, what is it? Well, NASA says that it's just an optical illusion and it's not actually trees. But other people think that NASA is trying to already grow things on Mars or that this is part of an alien structure. Who knows, but NASA's being hella sketchy with this photo. In our fourth spot, we have the lady on Mars. In 2007, people went nuts when the Spirit rover snapped this eerie photo on the planet. It literally looks like a human figure perched on a rock. Now NASA immediately denied this and said that, you know, it's just a rock. But that didn't stop UFO enthusiasts. They believe that this rock is actually a female figure made by aliens, or that it is an alien. Like, look at that. How can that be a rock? Like, there's fully arms and clothing on it. I'm sorry, I don't believe it. Nice try, NASA. Better luck next time. That's a woman. In our third spot, we have these space guests. A couple of years ago, a Russian cosmonaut aboard the International Space Station noticed three unusual lights fly by their craft. Thankfully, they got it on film. The cosmonaut believes that what he saw and captured was indeed a UFO flying by. He said, and I quote, five objects appear flying alongside with the same distance. What do you think those are? Meteors, satellites, or dot, dot, dot? The lights are in a straight line and apparently were hanging around that area for almost a minute before disappearing. He has no explanation for it besides it being a UFO spacecraft. In our second spot, we have the alien statue. In 2019, NASA accidentally leaked some photos that we shouldn't have been able to see. So they released photos taken by their Mars robot opportunity. In one of the shots, someone pointed out that there appears to be a dark object near one of Mars's craters. It looks like this object has a long arm, a bulky chest, and two leg fragments. One person said, and I quote, it looks like an actual statue. There seems to be so many anomalies 
anomaly stones on Mars that at some point, one must admit that sometimes a rock is an ancient artifact, whereas others believe that this is an alien's corpse that is decomposing. But what do you think? It certainly looks like an alien to me. And in our number one spot today, we have the alien city. So there's a theory out there that aliens do actually live on the moon. However, they inhabit the dark side of the moon, aka the side of the moon facing away from us that we can't see. Well, a man named Scott Waring found physical evidence to prove this. He obtained satellite images from the dark side of the moon and saw that the moon has structures that cast shadows. Take a look for yourself. If you zoom into the photos, you can see a bunch of weird objects on the moon's surface. That's not the normal texture of the moon. Those look like structures. So he believes that aliens are for sure on the moon and that NASA has been covering it up for years. Not only that, but the images that NASA chose to share with the public had been altered so that the objects were edited out. And then NASA added fake craters in that location. Why would they do that, huh? That's suspicious. Yeah, that's hella sus. Kicking off the list at number 10, James Webb selfie. We'll kick this bizarre space list off with a space selfie, of course. The James Webb Space Telescope launched December 25th, 2021, so yeah, it was pretty recent. This thing is a game changer, truly. NASA's latest and greatest space telescope can observe infrared astronomy, and it's 100 times more powerful than the previous Hubble telescope. Although he's pretty good too, he's got some bangers in this list as well, he's got some good snapshots. We're about to see some stuff, basically. They're literally calling this thing a time machine. Blake Bullock, astrophysicist, physicist and director at Northrop Grumman Aerospace Systems and contractor of the project, says it's the biggest, most powerful telescope in space ever. Webb can literally look back into time further than Hubble could. Hubble could see galaxies that were well on their way, but with Webb, we'll be able to detect the earliest objects in the universe. But first, let me take a selfie. About a million miles from Earth in a pocket between Earth and the Sun called L2, where the gravity between both the two are balanced, James Webb is stuck, essentially. He's just stuck floating in space in between both of these gravity fields. And he has the courage to take a selfie. What a brave young little soldier. It was a dead-on photo too, right? Not like an angle from above, it was like one of those boom selfies. Like a dad's Facebook profile photo, you know, like one of those selfies. We also have the second photo that James Webb took, but you know. I'm gonna save that for number one. Number nine, Mima's moon. A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Just kidding, this one's actually really close. It's Saturn, it's right, right there. Saturn is known for having a plethora of moons. Saturn in total has 82 moons, including this one, Mimas, a moon that looks oddly familiar. Why do I feel like it's gonna just blast us all the smithereens? Why do I feel like that's gonna happen? Is that the Death Star? Is this thing pointing at Earth? Which way is it pointing here? That's, that really matters. Saturn's smallest innermost moon is causing quite the stir here on Earth. About a month ago, researchers discovered that this moon has a bit of a wobble to it, almost like a floating magic eight ball. Something is sloshing around inside. Its gravitational pull is a little off. It's kind of... It's just grooving around in the solar system, you know? Mima could potentially be housing a liquid ocean. Yep, we got more water in space. Pretty close, too. If that was the case, everything we know about water and ocean life in space would have to be rewritten. Number eight, black hole helix. Imagine looking, peering through a telescope, and then you see this. I would throw up right into my telescope. This is a galactic jet. It shot out of a black hole at the center of the M87 galaxy. It's pretty scary looking. This helix shot out a whopping 8,000 light years. Yeah, it's pretty far. That's so far I can't even fathom how far that is. You know, like my brain won't allow me to really picture that. This sounds like a threat, really, but I'll remind you that the M87 galaxy is 55 million light years away from us, so we're not gonna get any galactic jet on our hands anytime soon, know what I mean? But just how does something like this happen? Astronomers in New Mexico discover that this massive jet is caused by a corkscrew-shaped magnetic field. What in the witchcraft, like what? Like a space undertow made out of gravity. That doesn't sound jarring at all. According to the National Radio Astronomy Observatory, this is the longest magnetic fields ever found in a galactic jet. Which is fine, that's the first time I've heard of that. I'm like, that's, you can take that rain, enjoy it. That's, we're not gonna try and beat you. It's stuff like this where I ask myself why I'm worrying about a phone bill. Humans are so tiny compared to this, it's insane. We don't matter. Hey, n uh, number eight, we don't matter. Hit that thumbs up. Number seven, Jupiter's clouds. We've all seen and heard of Jupiter's big red spot. That's just a nightmare in itself. 
So big, always going, no idea why, can't even think about it. But when NASA's Juno spacecraft passed the Goliath back in 2017, it captured something almost just as interesting, if not more, dare I say. Jupiter's clouds. It feels like you can just put your arm out and touch the silky space sky. It's beautiful, but that's about 20,000 kilometers away. It's also quite scary. This big ball of hydrogen is quite mysterious below these clouds. So far, NASA has found lightning higher up than they ever thought it could go. They've also found constant storms at both the North and South Pole and winds so powerful that the planet's magnetic fields are literally being moved around. That's how strong the wind is. Your skin would just blow off. You'd be a skeleton just standing there. Beautiful, mysterious, and deadly. We love space on MA10. Number six, Mars trees. This looks like moldy bread almost. What in the hell, what are we looking at here? Is this actually a photo, a real photo from Mars? Are those trees? There's not a chance here. Matt Damon grew potatoes on Mars in the movie The Martian, but I don't think he can grow any pine trees anytime soon. What you're looking at here is still pretty insane. Due to the evaporation of carbon dioxide frost, dark sand is sliding down the frosted side of the dune, so it makes it look like there's trees on the planet Mars. Sun-heated carbon dioxide ice, that's just, I, I read that and I go, what? What does that even mean? Where do I start with this? We thought we found a giant alien back in 1976 when NASA's Viking 1 flew by and it looked like a face was in the planet. Remember that? It looks like a Jabberwocky. It's just lying getting a suntan. This one here is in an optical illusion. It's just weird space science. Number five, smooth moon. When we think of moons in the sky or like how other planets have other moons, we think of them as our own. Just a big ball of cheese in the sky, a big sphere, it's got craters, it's pale, we get it, right? Well, as we've seen so far in this list, some moons can look like the Death Star and some moons can look like chewed gum, apparently. Saturn's small moon Atlas looks like a UFO. It's not a sphere at all, it literally has the shape of a UFO. How scary is that? NASA's Cassini spacecraft caught this image back in 2017 and it almost looks like two moons have crashed into one another and then now it has a ring-like edge to it. When new photos came back after discovering this moon way back in 1980, scientists were surprised that this moon is actually really smooth. In 4K, they're like, oh, it's not even the pixels, it's actually really smooth. A smooth moon, you say? <laughs> Let me take a look here. This little smooth moon in the sky, a little pervert. Number four, dead galaxies. This one sounds scary, dead galaxies. Guardians of the dead galaxy. New research from NASA, including the Hubble Space Telescope, along with the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array in Northern Chile, they found six different dead galaxies in total. They're all like, that's one, that's two, and they're like, hey, we found four, all dead, horrifying. How does this happen? Let's look into it. These dead galaxies had run out of the cold hydrogen needed to make stars, and without the fuel for new stars, these galaxies were basically running on nothing at that point. It's kind of like when your car battery dies, only this is on a cosmic scale. This discovery led us to new questions we didn't even know we had. Like what led to these galaxies to die anyways? What happened to all the cold gas in them so early on? These six galaxies lived fast and hot lives, but we aren't sure what went wrong quite yet. Lead author and assistant professor of astronomy at the University of Massachusetts, Kate Whitaker, she proposed several potential explanations and gave us insight onto the future of the studies, which she said, did a supermassive black hole in the galaxy's center turn on and heat up all the gas? If so, the gas could still be out there, but now it's just cold. We need Thanos to come back and just, you know, start this fire up. Just a big, someone get a big lighter and just go and just light it back up. Alas, new life. Is that Thor? Welcome back. Number three, solar flares. Our lives literally revolve around the sun. It blesses us with life energy, solar rotation, and most importantly, tan lines, obviously. But sometimes she acts up. Sometimes she gets a little cray cray. Sometimes she gets a little and then she spurts out lava and scares us all. Sometimes she creates these powerful magnetic fields that create sunspots larger than our entire planet. Yep, like I said, she's moody. This creates a stream of radiation. It's called solar wind. Now, normally this is a beautiful event to see. We have many photos of it now. The northern lights happen because of Earth's magnetic field reacting to this specific radiation. Beautiful, but Really scary when you think about it. This past October, a large solar flare was spotted and then three days later, it finally hit Earth. The geomagnetic storm reached category G2, which out of five is pretty strong, especially when you look at it as a, you know, on a planetary scale. The biggest solar event was back in 1859. It's called the Carrington event. It was strong enough to disrupt telegraph communications, even shocking, literally shocking, some telegraph operators. Like if that happens again, and it's even stronger this time, we're looking at huge power outages on a massive scale. Imagine talking to someone on your iPhone and it blows up. Right in the middle of Avatar 2, boom, blackout. Life as we know it is now meaningless. We're all crying in public. Number two, the space crab. Is the multiverse collapsing? 
What, what is this? The appropriately named Space Crab Nebula was discovered back in 1054. Yeah, way back then astronomers looked into the sky and saw this new bright star. They saw it during daytime, that's how they knew something was up. What they were observing at the time was a supernova explosion. How spectacular is that? This was when the Crab Nebula was born. It's not too far away either. It's just a mere, you know, 6,500 light years tucked away in the constellation Taurus. If you're a Taurus, you're watching, you're like, oh, no way, I'm a Libra. I'm like, get out of here. What do you know? The image of the space crab here was captured over the course of three months. NASA put together 24 exposures captured by, of course, our Hubble. The orange glow we see, those are literally star remains, just large pockets of hydrogen. The interesting part here with the space crab is back in 2005, over the course of 10 Hubble exposures from September to November, these waves can be seen expanding outwards, waves coming from the nebula's pulsar. Space is so scary. We have one moon to worry about here. Meanwhile, all of this is going on in our space neighborhood. I'm terrified. And finally, number one, mystery wave. More waves coming in hot, really hot this time around. If you've seen Interstellar, this next one should hit close to home. I'm not a fan of wave pools or waves in general. My stupid head just bobbing around in the ocean, that's, that's peril, that's, that's a nightmare situation. I can't swim too well, I don't know, I'm too lanky. I'm like a piece of seaweed floating around. The largest wave ever seen in the entire solar system, of course, I had to save this one for last. On a planet a little closer to the sun, Venus, the pressure in the atmosphere can cause some massive waves. Back in 2015, a Japanese spacecraft zoomed by and caught this phenomena. Usually clouds there will move around 100 meters a second, but these clouds, these massive ripples, stayed in the same place for four days, way above the ground level also. They were just like, huh? and then they got stuck there. Due to a runaway greenhouse effect, temperatures on Venus hit around 460 degrees Celsius. So this wave may have been powerful enough to change the climate for those four days. Pretty crazy. I feel like Canada, we get a lot of weather changes, but this, this is next level. Mm -hmm.